Hello class, this is Professor Luke and welcome to week 5 of Project Management. We are on the definite downward trend towards finishing this class up, only weeks 5 and 6 to go. Um, this week we're going to focus on scheduling. And so what, 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 do, what I mean by scheduling, I guess. Basically a project schedule is what you live by as a project manager. Um, after the scope is determined, that's the first thing I do as part of the project plan is to develop the work breakdown structure or the schedule. Um, this shows us the tasks that are necessary as well as the time frame and how long it'll take. And so that's what we're really going to talk about over the next few minutes is uh, what a project schedule is and what are the intricacies of such a project schedule. Now I'm just going to say your book covers this in a lot more detail with a lot of graphs so definitely read the chapters and view the chapters PowerPoints but um, what I'm giving you is perspective from my perspective as a actual project manager in the field. So first let's start off with what the pin box says. Project scheduling is an output of a schedule model that presents linked activities with plan dates, duration, milestones, and resources. So basically in project scheduling we identify what we're going to do, what it takes to get there, what order those things need to go in, and then what resources and quantities of resources and labor and people and technology are necessary to complete each of those activities to reach those objectives. So think of it as a tower. You have your objectives at the top, breaking that into smaller pieces being the activities in a certain order, and then with each activity you break it down into resources. And then on a work breakdown structure schedule, or WBS, you're breaking that even into smaller things called tasks, or sub and even subtasks if necessary. So there's basically two types of schedules. Um, there's a lot of variations, but to keep it simple, um, first there's a serial a sequential logic model. Basically it says A must be done before B, B before C, and C before D, etc. all the way to the end of the project. Now there's also what you call non-serial schedules where um, basically things can go in parallel. Sorry about that guys, my dog's barking here, let me pause it. Alrighty, sorry about that. Let's, we have a little bit more quiet to proceed here. Okay, um, so th some things I want to talk about. Serial obviously means that things are going in a certain order. Concurrent means they're happening in parallel. Now, um, there's things called uh, merge activities, basically where several activities, so on the right picture here you see F and G, they're merging into H. And this can happen, it doesn't have to happen at the end, but it can happen anywhere within the schedule where basically two or more activities are merging into one task or one activity. Now just the opposite is a burst activity. So also on that right you see C the paper draft and that's bursting into uh, both D and E which can be done at the same time or in parallel. So essentially think of just the way the definition of those terms are. Merge is you're bringing together, burst you're exploding out. And then there's something which you call predecessors and successors. A predecessor must be um, is something that happens first or must be completed first where a successor is something that happens after. So um, in, the left, in the left picture here you must draft the paper before you can edit the paper obviously. So C is a pred predecessor to D. Or I mean you can like, likewise D must happen after C so it's a successor. So predecessor means things that before and successor means things that have to follow. From these project schedules we cr create what they call a critical path. Now a critical path is basically the longest path from end to end of one of these schedules or one of these work breakdown structures that determines the shortest project length. So how quickly can we get to uh, the end of the, from beginning to end while still accomplishing all the goals. That's how I define critical path. Um, there's things you can do to eliminate the critical, uh, shorten the critical path. 
you can eliminate tasks, which maybe there's some things that were not uh, actually necessary, but would have been nice to have. Um, you can make some things that were sequential, non-sequential. Um, you can also overlap sequential tasks, basically saying that there's certain tasks that um, maybe there's two strands of sequential paths and they can be done at the same time instead of following each other. Also, um, you can shorten the duration of tasks. You can shorten early tasks. You can shorten longest tasks. You can shorten the easiest tasks. And you can um, add cost, which is to speed up. Basically, you'd be getting additional resources. So with these paths, what's the critical path? There's four relationships I briefly want to talk about. There's finish to start, finish to finish, start to start, and start to finish. So let's talk about each of these briefly. Finish to start basically says item B has to finish to, to start relationship with A. So B cannot start before A finishes. So for example, my example there, um, A is a design machine and B is develop the prototype. You really cannot start de developing the prototype until you have the machine design, designed. And then there's finish to finish. So B has a, a finish to finish relationship with A. B cannot finish until A finishes. So um, essentially, they mo both must finish at the same time. So if A is laying the electrical wires and B is inspecting the electrical wires, you cannot be done with inspecting the electrical wires before all the electrical wires are laid. So um, even if you uh, start inspecting or start laying the wires, um, you'll still need to, even if inspecting the wires takes less time, you'll still have to do it through the end of A because you want to make sure everything gets inspected. Then there's start to start. Um, basically, um, it's a, B has a start to start with A. B cannot start until A starts. So they basically must start at the same time. So, for example, pouring asphalt and leveling the road. Um, if you've ever seen them where they're uh, laying asphalt um, or pouring out asphalt out of the, dump, the cement mixer, they're, they're at the same time leveling it. So you're not going to start leveling the, the asphalt before it's down, and you're not going to pour the asphalt and then level the road because the asphalt will be dry by then. And then finally, there's start to finish. Basically, B has to start to finish with a relationship with A. B cannot finish until A starts. So what does that mean? Example, A starts using the new software system. B is phasing out the old system. It's assumed that you um, cannot, uh, that you can't do both in p complete parallel. However, you cannot um, phase out the old system until the new system is implemented. So there's going to be some overlap there. And when we talk about overlap, um, there's there's what they call lag. So say back on our um, finish to finish example with the wi electrical wires. Like I said, inspecting the wires may take a lot less time than laying the electrical wires, but they still must finish at the same time. So there'll be some waiting period or gap period, and that's what they call a lag. Also, you, I'm sure you've seen Gantt charts. If you haven't, look in your book, look in the PowerPoints, or even Google it. Um, basically, these are a, a tracking tool that are used. In MS Project, which is what I use currently in my position, uh, as you write the project plan, um, the Gantt chart is actually built for you, which is pretty nice. I don't recommend MIMUS Project in the real world, but you, you work with what you got. And then finally, the last thing I want to talk about real quick is accelerating or crashing a project. Do I recommend this? No. Is it realistic? Yes. Um, basically, you have different ways you can crash a project. So basically, say you are either um, your customer needs your software two weeks earlier than what you had originally agreed to. Um, you can improve existing resources, which increases productivity, you can change our work methods, um, compromise quality and reduce scope, do less or do it not as well, which definitely is bad. Um, institute fast tracking, which basically is uh, coming up with a new method and time scale. Working overtime, adding additional resources, of course, and then uh, increasing resources. So over time, would be the same resources working more, 
we're adding resources, obviously, adding additional people to the project. Okay, that's what I have this week, guys. Um, hope this was. Let's have a great week five. And if you have any questions, email me. Have a great week, guys. Take care.